Okay, so in this video, I wanted to talk about the conserved quantities and symmetries of the Dirac equation and Lagrangian. So um, we saw before we did we worked out before for the Klein-Gordon theory uh, how it transforms how the real scalar fields transform under infinitesimal Lorentz transformations and um, we needed that to compute, you know, the conserved quantities. They have the like dl, d mu of the field times delta of the field, and so um, yeah. So we needed to work these things out. And now we have these spinner fields that we want to do the same kind of thing with. So our spinner fields transform like this, and again, so my lambda. Here I have two matrices here, lambda and s. So lambda is, um, and and these matrices represent the specific Lorentz transformation you're doing. So these m's are the generators of the transformation, and then the uh, omega rho sigma are just a set of six numbers that designate which of the three boosts and three rotations you're doing. So omega, so omega rho sigma is anti-symmetric in, in these indices. And uh, similarly, this s is the same kind of thing, only so lambda and s both represent the same Lorentz transformation, but lambda acts on four vectors and s acts on spinners. So that's why they're different matrices. Um, but uh, so we can work out, you know, given these things, we can write down if the transformation is infinitesimal, so our, so our transformation parameters, these omegas are infinitesimal, we can tailor expand this like this. And then again, do some more uh, expansion here, uh, expand this psi of a thing in the usual way. Uh, just like for the scalar field. And basically we get this. We get these three terms, and then of course there's a fourth term involving this. Um, it will involve a pair of omegas, which are infinitesimal, so that term will go away. So I end up with these three terms, and I can read off my delta psi as uh, this. And just like before, um, really what we find when we construct our conserved quantity uh, like this is uh, okay so well, actually one thing to note is that so our conserved quantity it's like DL or no 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 sorry sorry no that's right that's right it's just this um, and just like before when we did the Lorentz trans Transformations for the Klein-Gordon field, we saw that the conserved current we got was really the sum of six independently conserved currents. And the same thing happens here. So the rho sigma um, conserved current quantity will just be, you know, dl d d mu psi, which is i gamma bar psi mu, or i, I gamma bar gamma mu. I, I psi bar gamma mu. <laughs> Okay, so, um, which is easy to work out, though Dirac Lagrangian is probably the easiest Lagrangian to work with. Uh, but so that's the easy part, and then we have this delta psi, which I just take off basically this part of it. And that's how I get my conserved current. And then there are, so this m here, we can do some simplifying. Uh, basically this M uh, can be expressed in terms of our metric tensors, our Minkowski metrics. So M rho sigma is, uh, or so M rho sigma, and then the, the gamma nth component of it is this. That's given somewhere in Tom's notes. And that just allows me to rewrite this term like this. And then just using these uh, raising operators, I just change, you know, some of the indices around. 
And so what I end up getting is this. And so, of course, this is the conserved quantities associated with boosts and rotations. And so importantly, um, for the angular momentum operator, uh, so we got a similar kind of looking expression when we did this for the scalar fields, and, but we only got these two terms. And now we have this third term here involving this S. And this is the term that will lead to when you compute the angular momentum of um, state one particle states with no momentum, you get that they have spin one half. So that's uh, something new and interesting. And uh, so yeah, so that's the uh, new thing about spinner fields is when we quantize theories according to uh, that include spinner fields, we get spin one half particles. And then, uh, so lastly, oh, actually, one more thing I've done here is when we compute the energy momentum tensor, which is actually very easy to do. So, you know, again, our, uh, our uh, Dirac spinner field will transform like this. And I compute my energy momentum tensor like this. So I have these three terms. Uh, there's no derivative with respect to psi bar, so this goes away. So I just have this term, which is easy to compute. And then because my Lagrangian involves, you know, it's basically psi bar multiplying the Dirac equation, uh, but the Dirac equation is satisfied. So basically, this expression is zero. That's um, so the Lagrangian is zero. So it simplifies even more. Both of these terms go away. I just have this term, which is very easy, easily computed to be this. And then importantly, from this, we can compute the Hamiltonian, which is, of course, the uh, integral over all space of the zero, zero component. And then he writes it, you know, it's using this expression, it's this, and then using the Dirac equation, you can rewrite this a little more. Um, so that'll be important when we do scattering, obviously. And, um, oh, and so I use this expression. So this is my energy momentum tensor T u nu is this, and I, I that occurs in this uh, expression that I got here. So I plug that in here to us. Uh, so, you know, it works out in a similar kind of way as it did for the real scalar field. We also got the, uh, you know, x multiplied by t there. And then um, the last few things, there's another conserved quantities, uh, just like for the complex scalar field associated with this transformation. And, uh, you know, you can just see that it leads to this kind of conserved quantity, which is again like a uh, like charge, which of course, so being a complex spinner field, um, yeah, so I guess complex scalar fields led to, you know, spin zero particles and antiparticles. And now a complex spinner field leads to, leads to uh, spin one half particles and antiparticles.